What is going on guys? Jeff here, Mad Hatters Reef. Today we got a brand new video for you and in today's video we're going to be talking about things that you can do to help prevent the uglies from happening in your newly cycled nano reef tank. Uh, this is going to be a continuation of the nano reef tank build and today we're going to look at adding some copepods to help with the diatoms and also get some cleanup crew in there before we add our first saltwater fish. So here we got the newly cycled we have it heavily on the white spectrum um, currently we don't typically run it this white because we got the old Kessel light which we talked about recently we can make well that's the dim but we can make it as blue as we want to uh, camera doesn't pick it up quite as much as you can see here though we got them diatoms going on uh, we got a little patch right here we also got a patch on the rocks there and there's some um, that are spreading throughout. So diatoms aren't necessarily a huge deal. It's usually an indication that the tank is actually cycled, which we just talked about in the last episode. And with this, what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be adding some pods to the tank. Pods are incredibly beneficial to adding to a newly cycled tank and even maybe just a skosh before the tank is fully cycled. And what they're going to do is help Chewy Chomp on the diatoms. Uh, diatoms are on the menu as far as copepods are concerned and they are going to actively seek that out and eat it and then it will be removed from the system. There's a little bit more to it than that but you get the drift. So copepods will eat phytoplankton and they'll eat diatoms. I culture phytoplankton in store to help uh, aquaculture my pods but I don't culture diatoms outside of having them in the tank. They will, if you put them into your reef tank, eat the diatoms so that's no longer a problem in the tank. But not long after you see diatoms, usually you'll start getting some other allergies growing in there as well. So it's not a bad time to be adding some invertebrates or cleanup crew as we call them here in the trade uh, to the tank. And we're not gonna go wild. You know, I'm a little old school when it comes to the invertebrates and adding them to the tank and I like to add one hermit crab or a snail to the tank, um, I'm sorry, per gallon to the tank. And then uh, we're not gonna do that all today. We're gonna go slow and steady. We're probably gonna do two hermit crabs and two snails and let them do their thing. And then we're gonna add the pods and that's what we got going on. But before we get into all that, I need your help with one thing. So what I wanna do is I wanna give this tank a name. Um, not sure what to call it yet. It's pretty standard as far as uh, the Innovator Marine Nouveau 15 all-in-one. Uh, we are going to be running the Kessel Light on here. And we're not going to do any power heads or upgrades to the pump. So it's going to be pretty stock. But, as you can see, we got a lot of room for activities. And what my plan is, is to do a different nano reef tank down this whole bar. And eventually get the... Uh, Aptasia farm out of here uh, move to somewhere else. Maybe I'll move it back home um, But I want to have a bunch of the innovative marine tanks here and each one of them is going to be slightly different So like with this one, it's pretty stock. Uh, we got the Kessel light on there kind of really, you know simple stuff um, but we're gonna do Pretty standard fish pretty standard corals and then as we go along we're gonna get a little crazier and a little crazier and then the one that will take this place uh, is gonna be nuts. But we're not gonna share too much about that today. So what I need from you guys on the Innovative Marine Nano 15 gallon all-in-one first build here, I need a name. We need something to call this thing. So in the comment section down below, uh, let's figure out a name for this build and uh, we'll, go, we'll go from there. All right, so we got our pods here. Uh, this is a three species blend. It has Tiggs, uh, Apocalop, and Tisby in here. So we got some big ones, some small ones. Uh, some of them, you know, they hang out in different sections of the, uh, the water column. I'm not really gonna be able to pick that up. Um, but yeah, so this is a in-store house blend of copepods. Uh, we're gonna dump the whole bottle in there and a lot of people ask when you're adding pods to the tank uh, how 
do you go about it? Do you do it with the lights off? Do you put it in the sump? It really doesn't matter. Um, as long as they're in there, they will find their way around. And for me, I usually just put them in the display tank because that's generally where I want them to, to be. I'll usually will add pods to a tank if I have some fish that have some special uh, feeding requirements or in the event that you're dealing you know, with something like the diatoms. Uh, but just simply pour it on in. And there you are. I um, culture my pods at 35 parts per thousand and I usually keep my tanks at 35 parts per thousand as far as salinity goes so there's no type of like um, you know shock that can happen by adding a bunch of pods to the tank and you know then like the, the salinity is also ends up killing them uh, but as you can kind of see there that was the 16 ounces that we just put in there um, you kind of see them floating around doing their thing but they'll just uh, so looks like some of them are already on the glass really hard to pick up we can kind of see those white specks floating around there that's all a bunch of pods that we just added to the tank so hopefully uh, next couple days we'll start seeing these uh, diatoms going away all right so we got the pods in there now it's time to go grab a couple snails a couple hermit crabs we're only going to do two and two just to get us started and get them in there because it isn't too long after the tank uh, deals gets through that small little diatom um, blurp it will start putting out algae uh, so if we have a couple in there to start working on that um, we're gonna have even less of a ugly stage with the uh, nano tank so that's the goal right so as far as hermit crabs go i'm probably just going to grab a couple of these red legged uh, they tend to be a little bit more hardy than the blues uh, and i got quite a few red legged kicking around so i'm not too worried about taking one or two out of the tank here we go these uh biota emperors are some of the most well social fish that I've seen and then we got the, the sea and reef oscillaris so a little bit of things going on here uh, toadstool got the grooves gagornian and then a bunch of hermit crabs and, and a few snails uh, mostly have trochus in here now, there's one astra there um, it's a big old trochus right there but I'll probably grab the astrias uh, just because they stay a little bit smaller. Um, trochus, they're usually more expensive and you don't need as many of those. Like, you know, I said one per gallon. These guys are really good for like one per five gallons. Uh, they're, they're good workers. Um, I prefer these. If I was going to be setting up a personal tank, I probably would go with the trochus because they breed. They will breed in the tank and you can maybe potentially get some free snails out of it. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to grab a couple of these red-legged hermit crabs and then a couple of the astras and we'll start getting those guys acclimated. All right, so we got a two-gallon bucket. I got my acclimator here. Um, this is a process that I have done on the channel a bunch. Uh, the AccuDrip is one of my most favorite uh, products. I have made these by uh, using Airline in the past. Uh, works just as good but you know for ease of use for me in my current situation I really like just being able to uh, squeeze that ball and have the siphon start so uh, this device is made for drip acclimation and if you're interested in checking out that uh, there should be a video somewhere here on the channel talking about that uh, but we got our little critters we got two astrias uh, and two hermit crabs. I got the smallest of what I could find of both of them in my system because uh, the feeding Availability to feed isn't going to be that much. They'll chew on the diatoms a little bit, but I just wanted um, Smaller ones to make sure that you know, we're not starving them if they're super hungry So smaller usually is not going to require as much food. Uh, so we're gonna get the acclimator started. Uh, I do take the wheel off from it uh, because I am acclimating animals usually a little bit faster than what you might do at home. Uh, so all I need to do is just pinch that off, squeeze the ball there, 
and our acclimation is started. And then we're going to put these guys in the two gallon bucket with the dripper. A couple of tips with drip acclimating. One, you want to make sure your tank is topped off before you start doing a drip acclimation deal. Uh, because if you're already in a position where your salinity is higher than it should be, you want to make sure ultimately that your tank is in a good spot. It's at the correct level that you keep it at before you start acclimating a new arrival to your tank. The other portion of that is if you are using a auto top off, and this gets me all the time. Let's make sure the auto top off is unplugged because if you are pulling water out that's gonna start dumping water in and your situation might turn into a brackish situation that wouldn't be good so a couple things uh, to make note of when you're talking about acclimating new arrivals all right so it's been about 20 minutes so that's enough time to get these guys to be all set so we're gonna put them on the rocks